Hello, this is Cuckoo today. I'm so happy to show you this. This is the no coast, zero coast, nil coast from uh, Make Noise. And uh, it's a modular synth. As you can see, lots of patch uh, opportunities here, but it is pre-configured when you get it. So you can just jack in a MIDI keyboard and play it straight ahead and turn the knobs to, to alter the sound. But it's when you patch it and start modulating, that's when you, there are so many opportunities uh, in there. And uh, when I first noticed this, uh, like a year ago or something, I was so pleased about the sound coming out of this. I was like, ooh, this sounds so nice. Even the, the cleanest, simplest patches, they sound lovely. They're, they're serene and full of bass, but clear, very, very, very good sound and I think Make Noise is known to have really high quality stuff in their modular and, and this is no exception this is high quality stuff so how do you play it well today I want to explore how you can make the most I don't know not the most of it but sort of the most out of it uh, without sampling it and without like sampling and and taking it in in different uh, tracks and stuff but it just just one unit and see what it can sound like with any, without any effect. And to do that, to sequence it, I'm going to use this friend here. Yeah, the Octatrack. And the Octatrack, it, it has MIDI and it has audio. And this has MIDI and CV. So how can I control this? Well, of course, I can use the MIDI, as much MIDI as I can to kind of bombard it with MIDI notes and, and some uh, some CC messages, maybe. But uh, another thing you could do, sort of fake CV control, is to use the audio output of, um, of the Octatrack and send CV-like signals and then send them into uh, to, to the note coast and see what it could do. It's not, you know, super controlled CV because a CV signal, if you raise the voltage, it stays there. But with audio signals, you raise the voltage and then it sort of equals out to zero again. So it, if you're planning to do pitched CV stuff, this won't do it, but uh, you could do like F, you can send uh, like vibratos, LFOs, you can send like, um, stuff intended to do FM synthesis from this and this has got four outputs so essentially this has got like um, a, a four sort of track um, CV sequence <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna use the Octatrack as sort of a CV, CV sequencer and a MIDI sequencer to control the no coast yeah let's do it let's <laughs> get Okay, so here we are. This is the No Coast. This is the Octatrack Mark II. But everything that I'm going to show you today works just as fine with a Mark I or any other sampler with multiple, you know, audio outputs or just two outputs. So uh, let's first hear what this sounds like. I'm just going to connect this MIDI. This <clears throat> is this regular MIDI cable. MIDI out. Yeah. There you go. And this is is the cable, uh, the adapter, the MIDI adapter that uh, came with it, no coast. If you have one of these, it's not guaranteed that it's gonna work because sometimes they're wired differently. So uh, make sure that it's wired the same way as the no coast uh, expects. Uh, there is a, a flow chart in the manual. So I'm gonna connect this, align it correctly like so MIDI inputs here if you want to make sure that when you start this up it's it's in default mode do this turn this off these two buttons hold them while starting up and there you go it resets it to its default state which can be good if you get it from someone else or if you're borrowing it or yeah you never know what custom uh, MIDI settings are in there and stuff so, without further ado, MIDI is connected. Let's head over to the MIDI track, uh, track one. To set up the MIDI tracks, you need to make sure that they're transmitting to a MIDI channel. So as you can see, double tap here, channel off, 
turn this to the desired channel, channel 1 for instance, and then this is the trick. Press the encoder, otherwise uh, the setting won't stick. So, let's see. And now, function and down, I'm going to access the chromatic keyboard. Okay, so it works? Yes. Um, I'm very quickly just going to go through the basics here. Sound, yes. MIDI is coming in. It, it fires off this contour envelope. Onset is attack, sustain, decay. Okay, let's take sustain back again. And the decay can fall off straight or in a kind of plucky um, exponential slope. So this is the linear. This is, the further you go here, the more plucky it gets. Okay, yeah, envelope, uh, it's called contour. Uh, this is the slope, this is um, something you can cycle, it's a, a custom LFO, I guess. And right now, it's pre-configured to send stuff to the overtone. Let's see, well, first of all, let's wiggle with the overtone. And you can, if you notice, this is like uh, the final mixer between the unaltered sound and the overtoned sound. <laughs> so, function left and right is octave shift. And this is what I mentioned with this raw sound being so lovely and also big. I listen to this. Now, you know, make noise, they know what they're doing. And many of these parameters can be uh, modulated through through these inputs. So uh, this is a little flavor of the sounds and I'm not gonna make um, a, like a full tutorial on the sound. Uh, there are, I've seen uh, other tutorials on that and some of them are really great. I'd recommend uh, Mahler Melodies, for instance. He's got a super, super useful uh, tutorial on, on, you know, everything about how you wrote it. But what I'm very curious to show you is how to use the Octatrack to sequence it through MIDI and audio CV-like tricks. Uh, so uh, let's do that. So what I did in the beginning here was to set up this channel for, for being channel one. Channel two is currently off. I'm gonna set it up to be channel two. I'm going to set this to transmit on channel 3 and this on channel 4. Oops. 4. There you go. And all of them, and this is receiving on all channels right now. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to I'm going to layer a lot of of uh, MIDI on top of each other. And in my head, I think it gets less messy for this to receive stuff on different channels. Uh, when I'm overlapping note tones. So if, if one of the same note happens to be in the same channel, I think the note off will kind of cut off a previous note off. But if they're on different channels, I think it will work much better. So, okay. <clears throat> so this, I'm gonna have the bass on track four and then kind of the lead up here or something. Uh, so let's make a small bass, uh, loop here and see what happens. I'm gonna dial in the warmer sound, maybe with a sustain. I'm gonna turn on the click. I can't hear it because it's... Um, I'm gonna configure the, cl 
the metronome. I'm actually going to use the metro metronome now. So project control metronome active uh, free roll one bar main volume. I'm going to send it out to the main volume. Uh, tonal off. Yes. Okay. So we've got a little click there. This is just a, a monophonic synth. I can't do polyphonic sounds. Um, so bear that in mind. I'm going to kind of make everything I can to make one channel sound really uh, cool and messy. Okay, the bass. I'm going to leave space for the melodies. So I'm not going to occupy everything at once here. So let's see. Two, three. some mistakes there. Okay, let's head over to track one and make a little melody there. In fact, let's turn on the arpeggiator. Make it faster. Let's record it. Okay, so channel two now, I'm gonna make a little melody. As you can hear, it's overlapping, right? So, as much as I can, I'm gonna leave space and and create stuff in the spaces between each other, but sometimes I'm going to overlap because it, it's cool. I'm going to keep the metronome on for the counting. Two, three, and. Try this now. So, wouldn't it be cool if I could do this um, without my hand doing it, but sending it from the octo track? Well, let's do that. I'm going to send like some sort of audio signal that resembles a CV signal uh, to these different ports here. I'm going to show you uh, an open source, I think I think it's open source and free, it's a, an app called Audacity. It's a very, it's a useful audio editor app where you can build sounds, uh, very simple sounds. And I'm going to mostly do sign based waveforms but also some noises. And then I'm going to save them as small audio uh, files and import it into this um, octa track. Okay, let's do it. Oh, and before I forget, a big shout out to Pyramid Sounds uh, for sending me this unit. Uh, when I first discovered Pyramid Sounds, I found them to be extremely classy with a super nice selection of modulars and also stuff like this, the no cost electron stuff and teenage engineering. And uh, I approached them and asked them if, if I could do anything to help them uh, and maybe we could do something together. So they sent me this unit and, I, and now I'm talking about the store because I find it really, really nice. And they also take pride in their uh, fast and uh, stable deliveries uh, worldwide and shipping. So check, check them out. Go to pyramidsounds.com and check it out. Very, very good. Okay, this is a free open source uh, audio app. It's it's pretty good actually, and I'm selecting this because it's free and it can, because you can generate audio signals. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to create some LFOs, uh, like something that is like slow like that. So 
let's go here and select generate generate a tone now I can generate like a sine wave or a, you know I can generate sine wave square or sawtooth I'm gonna do with sine wave and then select the Hertz here like and a full Hertz is very slow amplitude 1 is gonna be the maximum uh, volume and let's make it really short like I don't know uh, 400 milliseconds okay there we go okay so we've got like a signal here and this is so low so I can't even hear it 4 Hertz is like below human hearing range and if I want to make it uh, a looping a smooth loop I'm gonna make sure that this uh, starting point uh, corresponds with the end point so let's let's cut it here and zoom in let's see Go zoom in there let's say okay let's cut it there this should be just about just about it like a smooth looping waveform so yeah that's like a, a slow uh, not ex exceptionally slow but it's a slow LFO and this can be saved then as uh, I'm going to export and I've, I've done it before <laughs> so I'm not going to do all of it but um, as a straight up wave file okay so if I want to make an even slower one generate tone it, it goes down to one hertz that's the slowest let's make sure it's long enough it should be one shouldn't it should be like perfect yeah okay so this is even slower this is like very very slow LFO kind of signal okay so what about faster things I could uh, generate like a, a tone that is even faster like uh, 440 Hertz is uh, the tone A and uh, for one second there you go so this is uh, yeah and if you keep zooming you get to the points where you can actually start um, yeah drawing your own waveform if you want to which is uh, very nifty yeah yeah you can hear the click there that was my intervention <laughs> Ooh, yeah there you go <laughs> uh, and yeah that could be useful to have that what could also be useful for me at least I am a big fan of FM synthesis uh, so with FM you I mean with this you could create your own um, fade in and fade out on on the octatrack so the octatrack could be like the envelope if you want to but you could also create the envelope here like baked into the sound so uh, I could do like a fade in like this effect fade in and then uh, fade out here uh, repeat no F fade out so that this way it's now um, baked into the sound this could be useful like have an LFO or a, an FM kind of uh, swell uh, apply to any parameter or to the FM input and the click there is, is me you know uh, destroying it So another thing that I think is really cool with FM synthesis is um, is to have the pitch change over time. So we could do that with the chirp. So let's create something that start at thousand hertz and then uh, falls down to four hundred and forty hertz, for instance. And we start at amplitude one, which is full amplitude, and end in silence. And we'll make it linear for this uh, and let's make it like half a second long okay that could be really cool to to send to to any parameter there and yeah FM synthesis works really cool with this kind of um, yeah, falling pitches or raising pitches and what if we if we make it even faster like um, chirp 
we start at 10,000 hertz, fall down to 100 hertz in 200 milliseconds. Yeah, that could be really cool too. We could start there. And on the other track, you know, you can you can modify it and select the starting point. Another thing that I think is cool is racing, uh, rising um, chirps. <laughs> so if we start at like, I don't know, 50 hertz and rise it up to 880, we start silent and we go up to like 880 full. We do that in half a second. Oh, they're even faster. Like, okay. Yeah. And then after that, we could kind of keep that tone, generate the tone. Um, oh, no, let's, let's make it like this. Uh, chirp from 880 and then to like a thousand or something, a slow rise. Keep the linear here and diminish the volume over half a second. Okay, see what happens. So now it start up, you can see that, it starts like this. And we can see, we can hear that there's a click there. So let's see if we can find the click. Um, yeah, there it is. We can see that, oops. There we can clearly see that they do not um, uh, correspond there. They don't line up properly. So if we cut this from there to there, we should kind of bridge over that gap. So now we should have that click. Okay, let's see. Okay, there is a small click in the end here because I... Okay, let's make a, an additional fade out just to make sure it goes to zero. Stuff like that could be really cool to send to parameters again. And also, I think is a good opportunity to... Because there is no way to create like one patch and then suddenly a drum patch and then suddenly a bass patch. It's, it's n there are no parameter locks on <laughs> on the actual uh, no cost, but what we could do is we could send like uh, noise. This is a white noise, and this could be cool if you um, for if if we change the p the speed here of this noise, we can create different kinds of, of noises that could be cool to send to the NOCOS as well. And also in this particular app, there is a, a number of noises to choose from. That was white noise. Pink noise sounds like this. More uh, F-like, like the letter F as in Frederick. More fuller. And then there is the, the last noise called um, Brownian, <laughs> just even fuller of uh, the lower end. So what I've done now is I've uh, prepared like a range of different short uh, chirps like this. Ah, ah, sorry. Oh, and I'm gonna send these to to the. And this is going to help me make like a, a build a track on the no coast. And these are so low, we can't even hear them. Yeah. And, and these are ramp ups. And this is, yeah, this could be useful, like to ramp from zero to, to one uh, over time. Let's see. And this is like a modular click that I actually recorded from a modular. Uh, it's just a click. Okay, so now we've got a bunch of sounds and it's very easy to send it over to the Octatrack. Either you just take out the compact flashcard and insert in a card reader and, and 
you know drag over the files or you put the the octa track into disk mode okay let's head over to the the octa track and see what we could do with this okay so back on the octa track yeah still working <laughs> uh, let's go to project and project and uh, system usb disk mode so this is a way for the octa track to mount as a, a disk if you connect it with a USB cable. So I'm not going to bother with that because I've done it. So let's um, look through wha what I've got here. Okay, so this we've been in MIDI mode all this time. Let's head over to audio mode, MIDI audio. Yeah, so what I'm going to do now is uh, load lots of sounds into the pool. I'm going to set these up to be flex um, it, it can be static it can be flex I don't know why I'm choosing flex in this maybe because I'm planning to to sometimes use really short uh, sounds I think I rely I think I like it to have it in the RAM memory rather than stream it from the card because there's going to be a lot of reading activity and I don't know. It's just a, f a feeling I've got. Flex might be more suitable for this. So, okay, all of them are flex machines now. Let's double tap here to get to the to the list, to the slot list, and enter this. And I've prepared a little folder here called uh, CV. Let's listen to. Them. This is a CV signal. There's just maximum a maximum signal that could be used. This is ramp up from which it's not audio <laughs> audible okay so let's just take all of these um <laughs> oops oh, that's the last one okay so now we've got 30 sounds in here function and yes to preview sound so by the way now I'm sending, I'm sampling this on the main out uh, just to listen to it. Let's take this for instance, this one, yes. So now this is on track one, you can preview it like this. If I send it out to the Q outputs like this, Q, it starts flashing. We can't hear it now because it's going out here on the Q out. So how do we determine if it's on Q out one or two? Well it's right or left so I I think that left is the top one and right is the bottom one I think so I'm gonna go over here to the amp turn it to the left now it should be isolated to to the first one there so let's pick an appropriate cable for this let's see should be one here here's a cable it's a mono cable it's coming from uh, big too small So there we go, so I'm gonna press play now And the MIDI is playing now, but we're on the audio side now So, so let's plug it into to here Linear FM for instance, see what we could do. Okay, so we let's preview the sound now It's actually I'm just using the main output left now so but head over to uh, q output left so it should now be sent right here straight to this so we can hear something messing there so we don't let's catch that one yeah it's like a noisy thing going on there not as much as we would have liked so let's crank the volume up and also crank the amp volume up to maximum let's take one there as well some there yeah there's something right fm
Okay, let's take, I'm going to head over to the audio so we can hear what we're doing. Let's select another one. This is a very slow one like that. Let's do, um, <laughs> like, something like that. Let's see how, what happens there. Okay. Okay. And cue out. Yeah, let's try the LFOs. Maybe eight hertz. It looks like this. And Q out. So now you can hear it's like a massive vibrato going on. Now, if, if we don't want it to be that, you know, insanely loud, we could could let that uh, signal now being sent out to to the Q output uh, just lower the volume. So, volume. And it's important to know that when we, you're sending stuff out on the Q output, the level is not respected, I think. So it's all about the amp volume. And because these can be changed by parameter locking, we can do insane stuff here. And uh, let's try out the noise and see how it sounds like. This one, for instance, and volume up. Longer release. Okay, cue out. So I'm gonna extend the delay here so we've got more audio to work with. I wanna have something on there, on like five and 13. That. So let's set up another one to do something else. Like, let's see. Like this. Let's see what happens. And send it out to Q on. Let's do it on the same side just for now. Let's see. And crank up the volume. is uh, sort of cool and also we could do we could change the rate on one of these to make them really slow make this even slower to, to make it even more okay make it um, the envelope kind of shorter And then <clears throat> let's separate this and see what it sounds like. So um, instead of sending them out on the same uh, on the same channel, let's send it out to another channel. Here's another cable just like it on this second Q out. Oops. So let's see. Gotta keep it tidy. So what do we want to send this one? Because this is audio, this can be changed with um, um, with a scene slider. So um, let's create a scene here where we uh, change the pitch of these, for instance. So go here, right down. This one, right down. See what happens. <laughs> I want another uh, melody thing there. Let's keep going now. Let's create uh, a fourth one with a little vibrato. Let's see what that could be. Um, let's listen to it first. Four hertz. Yeah, that's four hertz. Let's do it. And no looping. And now let's change the rules a bit. Let's 
take this out and send even more on the main output. Yeah, I didn't have enough of these cables. So what I'm gonna do with this um, from the headphones output. And then we've got like, I don't know, right and left. Take a guess. I'm gonna take the white one and see which one it is. So I'm gonna send something to um, probably the left or the right. <laughs> Let's try right first and see if this will uh, change the pitch. Yeah, I picked the wrong, the right one. So right is going out to this white now. Okay. So I'll mess it up again. There. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, I'm gonna make the release time and the hold shorter. It takes a, a while until it stabilizes again. Okay, that's funny. This is a good place. And again there, but maybe at a different um, speed, right? It's crazy, this is crazy. Okay, it's not the most beautiful example, but, but you get it, right? You can send audio out to these, and the audio resembles CV. It's not fully CV compliant, but it resembles it, so therefore we can we could use it and, and make stuff like this. So what I'm going to do now is turn off the camera for a bit and, and prepare something uh, nice, and then uh, make a little performance. Oh, and by the way, if you're one of my patrons, check this particular post out on my Patreon feed because there is a particular offer for you waiting there, only for my patrons. Sorry, everyone else. Okay, end of message. Okay, so I prepared a little song for you on the octa track and the no coast, and I'm sequencing uh, the no coast, recording it in one go, and just picking up the voice with this one, if you, in case you're wondering what these two are doing. And uh, yeah, so no further processing, just a, a clean recording from one unit. So my goal here was to see how far can I go with just one unit and one monophonic uh, synthesizer, basically, with some kind of CV-like control. So let's, uh, let's do it. <clears throat> ah, okay, I'm going to start like this, pattern one.
So this is what you could do with just one unit and one controller, in this case the Octatrack. And uh, yeah, so there you go. <laughs> cool. I'm so happy that I got this finally. Uh, I've been thinking about it for a year and, and, and so happy that I got it. And uh, yeah, cool. If you're one of my patrons, by the way, uh, I encourage you to check out this particular post on my Patreon feed because there is a, a secret um, uh, offer to you in that post it's only for patrons so sorry everyone else who's watching this and wondering how you get to to know what it is but yeah 